All right, in this tutorial, what we're gonna look at is calculating the strength of a magnetic field. Um, we talked uh, in class about uh, the magnetic field strength being dependent on the current flow, the number of coils, whether or not you have a permeable core inside there, uh, and some other attribute, which is the you know how tightly packed those coils are. The equation for this uh, electromagnet strength is right here. Um, it's a very simple equation to use, and um, we're gonna see how to use it very well. So, some things that we're gonna look at. Uh, first, we've got the current, which is given the symbol I. So this is here, this is the current. And as you recall from your previous um, work in grade nine, this is measured in amps, A. N is simply, and over in this diagram here, we're gonna change this to capital N. It's the number of turns of the copper wire or the coil. And this symbol here, mu, M-U, Greek letter, uh, refers to this core, um, and this is the permeability. The permeability. Because remember that this mu value, or this thing that we placed in here, is called the permeable core. And it's made of a ferro magnetic material, a material that can become a magnet if it is induced, um, if it's near another magnetic field, you can line up the dipoles and increase the strength dramatically. Uh, if you just have air in there, air has a multiplier of like a millionth, so one millionth, uh, it's tiny. Um, you can get all the way up to uh, other materials which have a high multiplying factor and can actually create a very strong magnetic field like in MRI machines and things like that. The last one that we have here is our L value. And that's the tightness of this coil, the length of the coil, or how packed it is together, or how loosely spread out it is. Um, so this is the length, and it's measured in meters. Okay. Now, to just talk about um, how each of these things affect the uh, strength, what we're going to do is just look at anything in the numerator, for instance. Um, if you increase any of these objects, uh, in the numerator, you're going to increase the B, I guess we should state what that is, the B here, which is the magnetic field. And the magnetic field is measured in something called Tesla, or capital T, after Nikola Tesla. That's the magnetic field strength. Okay, so anything in the numerator, if you jack up the, the current, the, the I, if it gets really big, then the B has to also increase in size. If the N gets really big, then the B must get really big. And if mu gets bigger, B must get bigger. The only one that's a bit different is the L, where if L gets bigger, you're dividing by a bigger number, and therefore B will shrink and get smaller. To show this, um, we're gonna say that you know if we increase mu, then what we do is we increase effectively the magnetic field. Conversely, if we decrease mu, we'll decrease the magnetic field. If we increase n, we will get an increase in the magnetic field. Conversely, if we decrease n, we get a decrease in the magnetic field. If we increase the current flow, we will increase the magnetic field. These are all proportional. They have a proportional effect on the on the strength. The one that's different, obviously, is if we increase the L, then we decrease the magnetic field, whereas if we decrease the L, we increase the magnetic field. This is inversely proportional. Now just to look at that a little bit further, if we increase L, what we mean by this is a uh, widespread or a high spread of the coils. So spread them out away from each other. And this one would be a low spread, or you could say a high density of coils. So low spread could be high density, so they're all jam packed together and high spread could be low density where you're spreading them out quite a bit. Okay, 
this permeability uh, right here is something that we need to talk about a little bit more. So this, this mu value. Um, as it turns out, I've got a chart here, and you've got the same chart. Um, vacuum and air are a millionth. So 1.25 times 10 to the minus 6, that's a millionth. That means that if you just have air inside the coil or a, or a vacuum, they're essentially the same, you basically uh, do not enhance the magnetic field at all. In fact, you have a multiplier of 10 to the minus 6, which actually will decrease the magnetic field quite a bit. Nickel is 100 times stronger. Uh, steel is 800 times stronger. Electric steel is 1,000 times stronger, actually 5,000 times stronger. And met glass is a million times stronger than a vacuum. So it's good to put some ferromagnetic material in there. This list is not exhausted. There are thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of different permeable cores uh, that have been tested by engineers and physicists um, and have very specific values and are used for very specific things. Uh, met glass and things like that, you're going to want to use these types of ceramics and glasses um, in your MRI machines in order to really increase the magnetic fields uh, that they produce via this um, electromagnetism. Uh, just to help you out a little bit, some mathematics here. Um, this 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4, remember that that's basically this. The decimal place moves to the left four times. So it was it in between the 1 and the 2, it went back 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Same thing up here. Um, in your calculator, if you want to put this into your calculator, you would put 1.25 and then you would press the EXP button or on some calculators it's the EE button and then the negative 4. Okay, That's how you type it in. Do not start using the 1.25 and then times 10 to the exponent negative 4. You're going to get it wrong um, because of order of operations and the calculator is different. Um, so exclusively use this. Um, I can't stress this enough for the rest of this course and for every math course you take and for every science course you take, you should be using this. If you're not sure how to do this or how your calculator works for this, please see a teacher or a friend um, or a peer and you guys can uh, sort that out. It's very, very important that you do that. Okay, so in the next tutorial what we're going to look at is how to do some of these calculations.